All right, what is up? Welcome back to Archihacks. And in today's video, I'll be showing you my favorite InDesign tips and tricks to accelerate your InDesign skills and make better layouts. And this can be applied whether you're building a presentation board or making a portfolio. And yeah, I'll start from the quickest one all the way up to the most advanced and most powerful tricks. So first off on the number one, on InDesign, you have the ability to lock objects. So for example, when you're working with images that are underlaid, other images and texts, it might get a little annoying. You might accidentally move stuff and you don't want to get into find the right layers to lock and whatnot. There's a quick way to do this and which is simply by selecting that objects that you want to lock, right click and choose lock. And once you do that, this object is no longer within your selection. When you've made all the changes that you want in the overlaid texts and objects, you can go ahead and click on this little lock icon to unlock that object to bring it back. And this works vice versa. If you want to edit the background, then of course you can select the foreground objects and then choose control L for lock. And if you want to be extra pro, you can also use a shortcut, which is control L to lock and control alt L to unlock. And yeah, this will, this makes editing multiple objects on the layout super easy and make you look awesome. All right, for number two, you might already know how to use align tools that appear when you select multiple objects. And there are these little bar things and a little pin, and that allows you to kind of like align objects to like one side. You can use align in many ways. So if you know where the beginning and the end is going to be, you can simply select everything in that range and then choose distribute evenly. But how about in instances where your objects are not the same size? So for example, in this kind of layout, where you have multiple sizes, if you just do distributed layout, you'll see that larger objects are actually, the center of the large objects are in the same distance apart from the small ones. In this case, you might want to use distributed spacing. And what this allows you to do is that you can now specify how far apart these should be. So for example, in our instance, I'll use 0.1 inches and then hit the horizontal spacing. Now, as you can see, regardless of the object size, they're spread out by the even dimension. So I'm going to reduce that a little bit now that we're overflowing. I'll do 0 0.75. All right, I'll just scale this down. You can do that as well. Yeah, that's the number two. And number three is a really quick one. Um, there will come a time when you want to reset your foreground and background color or fill and stroke color. And you can simply do that just by hitting the shortcut key D. The keyboard D allows you to bring this back into transparent fill and stroke into a black line. So for example, if you just want to like quickly reset these and then see how that might look, or if you've created like an empty frame that usually has like no visual appearance when you go into the preview mode. And yeah, in that case, you can just use D to like bring it back or make it visible. And if you want another quick shortcut that you can use is W. W allows you to switch between preview and detailed grid mode, where it shows all the hidden elements. And of course, if you want to go into the presentation mode, you can hit Shift W to bring it into full screen view for presentation. All right, number four. Yeah, I'm going to get into a slightly more advanced topic. And number four is using master pages. Master page is basically a bit of a template for your other pages and spreads. So what this allows you to do is that you can set up things like text boxes, grid lines, and any objects, elements that you want to have in your scene over and over again. And you can simply drag and drop these elements in to make them visible in the other layouts. You can also apply them by choosing the layouts, right-clicking, apply master to pages, and choose the master that you want to apply. There's a very specific example that is very useful, and that is page numbering. Documents often goes over like tens of hundreds of pages, and it might become a huge hassle to number them manually. And when that happens, you can use this thing called special characters. And you can get that by going to type, insert special character, markers, and current page number. 
as a shortcut for this as well. Now, once you insert that, you might see an arbitrary number or you might see a character like an, an, like an alphabet like A or B. And that simply represents the first character of your master page name. And once that is set up, you can apply them to pages and you'll see that they are appearing with a correct page number. Master page is really simple in setting up something that is really structured, but you might want to have a little bit of freedom. So for example, I want to add chapter title that is relevant to the content, actual contents of the page. So we probably don't want to have the same title up here. And when that happens, you can use the shortcut Control Shift Click to um, release the object from the master page. What's really great about this is that even though you're editing the text in here, this is edited text, any kind of edits that you make in the master page will actually be transferred into it. So for example, I'm on this, this page is using column four layout. So I'll go into here and I'll drag this into the margin as opposed to outside. And once we go back, you'll notice that all the pages that have that master applied, the page number and the page title have moved into the margin, even though we have released it from the master. So there's a bit of flexibility as well as um, structured automation that you can take advantage of. All right, I'll move on to number five. Number five is using paragraph style. It might be a little bit of hassle to set up in the beginning, but when you're working with a large document, it will become a lifesaver. So the way it works is that you can define a certain style that can be applied in multiple boxes across the whole document. So for example, in every chapter title, I have applied the title um, paragraph style for the main title and subtitle for the subtitle style and so on and so forth. If you don't see this tab, you can go into the windows, choose styles and choose paragraph style, paragraph style. We'll get into character style just in a bit. You might have used paragraph style before, but did you know that you can nest paragraph style within another one? So for example, in each of my paragraph styles setup, I have the base and there are subsequent layouts that are that is specific for each justification style. So for example, the base doesn't have any specific, it just defaults to the left justification but you can also make it into center, right, oops. and there's also a spaced one. Now, what's really great about this is that no matter what kind of style that you're using, if you, if you edit the base style, all the other ones will change too. So to demonstrate, for each of these text blocks, I'm gonna apply a different a paragraph style. Once that is done, I can go into the edit title, and then choose basic character formats. And let's say I'll make it into bold text. And immediately, as you can see, even though they are four different paragraph styles, the changes are reflected throughout all of them because the only difference between these styles is the justification. And similarly, the changes are also applied in other places in the document where we have used the same paragraph style. And just now, you might have noticed that the text color is different, even though they're using the same paragraph style. So you can see I'm using the left justified title. And up here, I'm also using left justified title, but the text color is different. And how can this be possible? You might be wondering. And that is actually done by using the character style, which segues us into the number six tip character style in combination with paragraph style. Character style is a little bit similar to paragraph style in that you can apply the style throughout the document and they are synchronized all together, but they're slightly more specific to the contents of the actual appearance of the text as opposed to the overall appearance of paragraph. So paragraph style controls like the overall justification, line spacing, and so on and so forth. And you can use character style to specify what kind of, um, say, weights that you're using for your font or indentation or, or italicizing them. So yeah, so in this title, since the background is dark, I'm I can use the white character style. And when the text gets into the brighter spot, I can choose 
the black character style. And both of these text boxes will maintain the same paragraph style. So it might, it might be a little bit confusing at first, but I think the best way to learn is to actually try and use it in your project. And maybe you can use it in your next layout or portfolio project. If you want to save some time in setting all these, uh, all these styles and master pages up, you can download our template from the link below. Um, this template includes almost 40 pages of unique layouts that is complete with title pages, resume, and your profile pages, as well as various different ways to present your work. And you can simply drag and drop your images in to get your portfolio ready to go. Of course, this is not meant to replace your portfolio design process, but to just get you started really quickly. So if you guys are interested, you can find it in the link below. All right, I hope you guys found this video useful and I'll see you guys next time.